Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show um, here uh, the broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and we do record the show every week. So if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, uh, that's fine. We do save and record them every week and they're on our archive page here. I'll show you how to get all to those at the end of today's show. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So, and we do, um, so we provide services to, to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find things on our show that are um, for academics, K-12, public libraries, museums, corrections, uh, basically anything that has a live, that is, has something like a library. Um, that's really our only criteria for the show is anything that's library related. So programs that we think, that, um, think libraries could do, services that they're offering, um, libraries sharing cool things they're doing. We will sometimes from the library commission share um, services and things that we are doing for our state libraries and everything so you find a whole you can find something for anybody who's got an interest in libraries um before we do get started with today's show i did just want to mention for our nebraska libraries here at the nebraska library commission we are of course aware of what's going on with the covid 19 and the pandemic going on and we have on our website on our library commission website here um a post uh pinned to the top of our page with resources for libraries. So if you are a Nebraska library, you can go here and you'll find some information. We are using a web form to collect information about libraries. If you're closed or open or what you're doing to provide any sort of services, Wi-Fi in the parking lot, those kind of things, you can um, keep us up to date with that. And then we have a specific subpage with some information for um, libraries, um, health, businesses, what do I do from home, things that you can do, um, that you, information that we gather. So in the library page, we're always adding to this as we see new things out there, new guides, new resources, um, any webinars or online sessions or information that's been provided by any sort of organization like ALA or IMLS or whoever. Um, so if you want to keep an eye on that, um, we're always adding to that. Um, and that may be um, in other states that have the same thing too. So check your state library and see if they are doing something like that. Uh, for Encompass Live, we have, um, this is a show we do every Wednesday, and we decided to keep doing it throughout this. I am broadcasting from home um, today, I'm working from home most of the time, as long as we can keep doing this, which is great about this show being an online show, as long as I have an internet connection, and whoever my presenter is has an internet connection, and all of you guys have a way to get connected, we can still do our show, not a problem. Um, so today, I am going to switch over presenter control to my speaker today and so that she can get her slides up here. So you should see that pop up now, Sam. Awesome, thank you so much. I appreciate there that, Krista. And um, we are definitely social distancing today. Um, if you want to, you can get a full screen there, there we go. Um, we are, um, oops, there you go. <laughs> uh, Sam Helmick is here with us this morning and she is from next door. Nebraska, uh, from Iowa, uh, Burlington Public Library in Iowa, correct? correct? Yes. yes. And she's going to talk about to us about doing some um, video marketing, which I think would be something very fun and something very useful, considering the current situation we are in right now of you know, working from home and whatnot. So I will just hand it over to you Sam, to take it away. Oh, definitely. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, and good morning to all of you. I want to start by just saying thank you so much for spending um, during these strange times this morning with me um, in this place. It's so good to have you, and I'll try to honor that with some uh, hopefully good information that you can use. Um, you were here for Calculus 104. Oh, I'm sorry, Amplified Engagement <laughs> for Dynamic Video Marketing. I was just making sure you all had enough coffee. Um, and a little bit about me is I am actually a commissioner for our our state library, and um, I'm the user experience and public uh, services manager at the Burlington Public Library in Southeast Iowa. Um, I have written a book on social marketing in libraries a few years back, and now in my uh, 
local community college. My side gig is to instruct that for the business school and then um, as an adjunct on campus. I'm very fortunate to be the state's ALA counselor and intellectual freedom chair. And when I have time, I love to do cosplays. I love to go to comic cons and dress up like people um, with high platform boots and wonderful equipment. And I have photos later um, if you are a cosplayer enthusiast as well. Awesome. Feel free to find yes. me at Twitter, <laughs> Geometric Rabbit. Um, and I would love to connect with all of you. So before we begin, I'm just going to do a social experiment. And I think Krista could probably help me with this. Billie Eilish, thumbs up, thumbs down. Who is this person? I just kind of want to get your feels on this on this person. Uh, can you? They're can say, for, for, I can. You know, me personally, big thumbs up, and I'll add in my husband as well, who's here. Um, I know he would say that. Um, there is a hand raising option for you guys who are on the line here. If you want to use that as your thumbs up, raise your hand, um, and that will tell us what you think of. Her. I agree. I have Barry, a friend, and a uh, bad guy on uh, a, a playlist, a, a free will playlist, and um, probably drive my cats uh, a little bit nutty here because I play it again. again. <laughs> so what are the responses kind of looking like thus far? Looks like we have a few coming with the hands up. Yeah, I'm looking at one, two, three, four. One said thumbs up in, in the chat. Um, nice. So, yes. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you all. Well, about maybe you. a third of the people saying yes. I'm just kind of Great. scrolling up and down the list to kind of gauge and it doesn't give me a total number, but it, I can see. Yeah. Oh, we have somebody saying who and never heard of them. That's totally understandable. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, totally makes Not sense. Everybody um, knows every, all the different musicians out there. Yeah. <laughs> And it's important um, to kind of fill the room for things like this because, uh, you know, you want to know your social marketing audience. And so part of this was just to have a little bit of fun and also to promote one of my favorite artists out there. But part of it's because if you want your content to be great as a marketer in libraries, you kind of have to ask your community to participate because I could tell you about Billy and I'd be super excited about it. I can tell you about libraries and be super jazzed about it. But marketing to you what I'm jazzed about really only appeals to me. So you have to be kind of part of the conversation. And so we kind of have to do that with our library communities. I am currently a public services librarian. Um, if you're in an academic setting uh, or private, you will want to think about the communities you serve and just sort of kind of grab their pulse, ask how they feel about Billy, ask what their concerns are, what are they focused on, what is valuable and matters to them, learn their currency, so to speak. So. In Southeast Iowa, we um, are the home of the Burlington Bees baseball team, Go Bees. We have our own potato chip factory called Sturgeons. Um, we have folks from across the globe that will ask for Christmas presents to be sent to them, package delivery by the U.S. Postal Service, because once you uh, eat Sturgeons, um, you kind of just have this yen for them throughout the rest of your life. It is an acquired taste, um, and they are also an incredible fuelant, just as a side note. <laughs> we are also home, according to Ripley's Believe It or Not, to the crookedest alley, snake alley there on the left-hand side, um, in the world. So we don't have the street like Lombard in San Francisco, but we have this cute little alley, and we have a Ripley sign right in the front of it right there. And so it's kind of nice to understand the flavor or flavors in the in this situation with chips of your community and know what they're about, their history, their shared values and culture, um, you know, the movers and shakers and uh, stakeholders in the community. If I pop on to Wolfram Alpha, I can tell that I'm a mini metropolis. I don't know if that means we have a mini Superman and a mini Lex Luthor, but that'd be kind of awesome. Our median age is about 37.5. We have an aging population. We're not replacing that population in Iowa, so kind of understanding who my demographic is and how I'm going to be able to communicate to them is important. I know that about 18% uh, have at least a associate's degree. Um, I can go to um, to Wolfram Alpha or I used to be able to go to Fact Finder. I think the census just dropped this last week, and unfortunately, and I can see that we are a rural yeah, suburban mix. They updated to something new for the census data. Oh, um, I can't wait to experiment. I have, well, I've thing. looked at it and it's not as slick as it used to be, but um, we'll see. Um, 
Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, there are wonderful ways you can grab this data in your librarian. So I imagine a lot of this is probably right in your, um, your holdings in your collection. And then um, for my business students at the business college, I create like this kind of tiny, quick, easy, fast and dirty uh, tool I call a social media survey. So we know about the history, we know about the culture, we now kind of know about the demographics, but how do they behave online? You want to check the pulse of your community and observe like their online patterns of use. Because if I'm marketing on Twitter, but nobody in my service community lives there, then I'm just screaming into the void. And if most of them work um, and play and engage on Facebook, then that's probably a piece of real estate that I should stake some land in. And so how this is accomplished is essentially you look at other businesses and institutions in your community. You can also compare with other libraries. So I'm in Iowa. Um, we are again a mini metropolis. So it was good for me to try to find a population that's serving a community of maybe 1400 instead of 60,000. Um, and then I wanted to also see a bigger fish in the pond and see how they were communicating in Des Moines or Ames or Iowa City with a much larger and diverse population. Because you're going to learn something from both. You're going to learn what it's possible when you have a large budget and a lot of infrastructure and and you can kind of have teams of dedicated folks doing your social media marketing but you also will have to know how you can do a budget of zero dollars and a social media team of one person and and how crafty and creative and and surprising the social media that comes out of those spaces are because they work with what they have and that is sometimes just absolutely messily beautiful at least it has been in my experience so you're looking at things like what platforms are they on facebook youtube tumblr what activity is happening during different times of the day? There used to be a beautiful metric, a beautiful evaluation or a formula where you could say, oh, you really want to hit people on Friday nights because everybody's out and they're at the bars and they're at the bowling alleys and they're at the restaurants and they're all looking at their phones. And you kind of want to hit people on Monday mornings, maybe around 7.30 in the morning before the kids go off to school and the teachers have to put the phones away and you and I have to put the phones away to start the day. And that worked for a while on social media, but now we're constantly on it because we're engaging for business and education um, because of the COVID-19 outbreak. We, um, it's almost our second residence. I would almost suggest that I summer in Instagram at this point. And so it's nice to look at these different libraries or businesses or institutions and see, well, how are they doing on Sunday afternoons when I expect folks to kind of be looking for something to do because we can't socialize right now? Are they getting any hits if they post before eight o'clock? I have a population with a lot of seniors. They get more done before 9 a.m. than I do probably the rest of the day. It's very impressive. They've been talking about the price of grain and the newspaper at 6.30 in the morning. And if I'm not posting something until 7, 7.38, I might have missed my market there where they were sitting there with the word of mouth in the local restaurant and could have shared what's going on with the library. So you kind of want to think about your dates and your times when you're posting. And then try to just come up with a campaign name. Are folks talking about their digital resources? And you can just write that down and give a brief example. Um, and then you want to see how the community is engaging with it. Are they engaging with it at all? Are we getting any likes or shares? Um, are we getting any sort of responses, any sort of feedback whatsoever? This is something that's good to track because it's going to help you isolate what kind of content is engaging. And, and I know that um, many of you are probably in marketing or marketing for your library or interested. So you'll know that videos are dynamic and graphics are dynamic, but what kind of videos and, and images is kind of what we're trying to discover with this survey. And if you'd like a copy for this, I can send this off to Krista and we can add it in links, hopefully maybe after. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yep. Um, yeah, if this is just um, some sort of doc, Word doc or PDF or something, yep, we can post that up to our slide share page oh, and then you'll link wonderful. from there, yep. Thank you. So what we gleaned from that social media survey was that, yes, video marketing is kind of key. Five billion videos are watched on YouTube daily. Um, it boosts um, engagement. Your click-through rate has almost up to a 96%. Um, videos are fun. Um, it's, it stops us from looking at walls of text and it kind of briefly interrupts us and on Facebook and certain platforms it will automatically play. So it's a lot of fun. We also noticed that library audiences were really responding to book recommendations. 
Um, and, and so promoting uh, reading and books through these recommendations or compiling lists or coming up with themes and those kind of related services was really working for the groups that we observed. So we decided to do uh, what we called a BPL, Burlington Public Library Book Talk. So Krista, would you mind sharing that first video? Um, yes, well, let me get the right screen up here. Thank you. Uh, let's see, this is the one with your face on there, right? Yes. Yes, my very confused face. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I'm just gonna move some things off my screen here so that it all looks good. Share my screen. There it is. Happy Monday morning and thank you so much for the great response that we got from last week's video when we shared some things that we love that are available at the Burlington Public Library for checkout. It's encouraged us to share even more. So here we go. <laughs> I would totally recommend Tommy Orange's There There. This is an eight hour listen, but we also have the book in the collection. It's about the modern Native American experience by an authentic voice. This is Tommy's debut novel. He's excellent. In fact, he won the 2019 Andrew Carnegie Award for Excellence in Fiction for it. When we featured this in our Beyond the Book Club, uh, which meets every third Thursday of the month at noon, the conversation just went on and on. It elicited so much thought. Totally recommend. When I'm not downloading, our digital magazines. I like to flip through them. Right now I've been going through some of our consumer reports. Not because I'm looking for a car or a digital device, but because as you can see they have some useful articles on an array of different topics. This one features uh, how to love your leafy greens um, and how to eat yourself healthy, which is really a cool approach. Another approach that I love with the library collection is how to eat yourself fun. So mm -hmm. I check out some cake pans, whether it's for a birthday party or just a cake day because who doesn't eat a cake day occasionally? Um, this is a lot of fun. What I love about our cake pans in the crate collection is that the staff have worked really hard to, to acquire the built collection, uh, collection of instructions. Mm -hmm. So if I need help color coding my cake pans oh, cool. or I need some, you know, some guidance, this is really useful. And I thought ahead, they've even laminated them. So if I get a bit of glue on it, I can just wipe it off before I check it back in, which is really nice. Uh, I found myself in adult biographies this last week because Jackie Chan turned 65 and we happened to have his newest book, Never Grow Up, available. It really talks about his whole life, from fatherhood to his work with martial arts, the fact that he's an Oscar winning actor and he's been in the business for decades. What I loved about this biography especially was like the four photos that kind of added depth to his, his story. So if you can check that out from an adult uh, biography. I didn't know if we'd get around to this or not, but I always like to feature things in nonfiction because I'm a nonfiction reader. And this is Patrick King's The Science of Overcoming Procrastination. Mm -hmm. What's really cool about his approach is that he talks about mindfulness and taking ownership, but then he also gives you tips like visualization and, um, and, and, and planning and making checklists. One of my favorite things about this really short read that can kind of help you with some life skills is that it starts with a, a fun quote at the beginning of each chapter. So here's one from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. You do not have to see the entire staircase, just the first step to start, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions about these books or anything else that we could try to help you find, we are always eager to take questions via phone. You can hit us up on Facebook or come see us at the desk. We love to talk books. I hope you have a wonderful week of reading ahead of you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. So and switch back to your screen if you want to you want to continue their slides or oh yes there we go okay. thank you <laughs> so what is happening there as you notice is it's very quick and very rough for a couple of reasons um when i used to visit a library i, I was intimidated before i became a library staff member because we have these beautiful grand buildings in many cases and these opulent monolithic desks. And we have this idea that we are quiet spaces still. And if we're not quiet, we're going to get shushed and it can be slightly intimidating. And so if I have a very quickly, almost hazardly crafted video and I'm talking to you just like I would talk to you, hopefully in an open and friendly manner as if we were just standing across the desk from each other like a typical day and in interaction at the circulation desk, this will be engaging to you on a level that is equal. 
there's there's an importance to be engaging and not over overproduced so that I can relate to you and connect. I also did a few things there. I didn't overtly refer to our digital resources other than to say when I'm not downloading magazines. I did mention casually our book club and when it meets and then I moved right on to the to the merchandise. I tried to flip the script with consumer reports because I'm certain that a lot of folks don't know that they do have fun recipes and this might engage an audience that would never have connected with it before. And then I do my best to always give a nod to the staff and the human capital that is in the building that makes all of this happen as if by magic. And what I noticed from these videos is that um, they were highly engaging. And so it was an opportunity to take what we had crafted and produce something else. In fact, um, I've learned a little bit about myself um, and performing in front of a video camera is a little different than speaking to somebody across the desk, of course. And so I would give myself uh, three takes. And I would just set up the camera, my little iPhone, in front of a couple stacked of books so that it would just stand there and be as smooth. And then I would just grab a couple of books and rattle off. And I gave myself three takes because I didn't want perfect to be the enemy mm -hmm. of good enough. And I wanted it to feel honest and organic. Mm -hmm. And so we've learned from the user response on social media that a regular release was nice because there was a day where I hadn't posted it until Tuesday. And folks were like, well, where are you at? Yeah. And I had folks who they don't know that you can it's schedule you. posts, so they were really happy that um we were up. They're like, oh, that was wonderful. I can't believe you were up at 7.30 in the morning talking about books. I'm like, I wasn't. I did this after work last week, but I scheduled it. We can. And that's what's you great thing about the social media is that you can schedule things to go at certain times. And what's great about it, too, is that that means I could sit for an hour and do about six of these and schedule them out for the next month and a half, and I'm done. I've, I've done the labor for, for the next month and a half, and the dividends will go for weeks. Um, it shouldn't be much longer than three to five minutes because you want to retain people's attention span. Um, the contents of the books are very important to talk about or the materials in your collection, but then if you can sneak in some side advertising of, like, again, your human capital, your programming, your digital resources, it's always good to refer to those things because um, we can't tell everybody everything we have in a three to five video, but we can intersperse these videos and, and sprinkle things in. Visuals became more important over time. Folks really wanted to see what was inside. So as you can see on the lower right hand corner, we've got like a medical dictionary going on. So I find I found the less the least creepiest page. <laughs> and so that's <laughs> <there>. been difficult. <laughs> and I practiced in front of my camera to see how far it needed to be to be engaging but not blur. And then I thought about things like copyright. So when I did talk about picture books, which I'm still absolutely in love with and can read all day, um, maybe a few quotes, a couple of pages tops, just trying not to get ourselves into any sort of copyright strike situation. And then I gave a call to action. I, I gave a call to please tell us what you'd like to know more about. And so folks kept saying, well, I need mystery suggestions. Um, I need something for my middle reader who is high reading, but kind of needs like a lower level in content. And so it would challenge me and help me to figure out what books I was going to select. There were even a few times where I would just go grab items randomly from the collection that I didn't feel like were serking well. And then I would just read their jackets and, and talk about, well, why I would go pick up this book and why I think this might be interesting. I don't necessarily fully read everything I recommend because in a collection our size at Burlington Public Library, that would be impossible for me to do. Yeah. We do have a question before you go off of this slide here. Of course. Um, yes. Well, we have a comment. I guess, I don't, I don't know if it was uh, someone does say they love your Spider Man coffee mug. Um, oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's a comment. Um, but then, about how long are the a question about the book talks? Um, that their marketing unit requires that our book talks be less than two minutes. They think that yes, it should I know. be less. Yeah. Some people do think that pithier is better. In fact, um, when I've when I've recommended doing uh, videos in, in, in classroom settings, I've, I've said, yeah, two minutes is probably enough. But what we're learning with podcasting and long form listening is that if you think about it, you don't really have to see my face. You could be listening to this at work. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a radio, and it would be fine. Long form discussion, I think, is going to rival in podcast form, maybe even the printing press. Because if you think about it, at any reading level, you can listen. 
and you can wash your dishes or drive your car or jog at the same time. So I think we're going to see a bit of an upswing in video production where it can be slightly longer and we can afford to allow it to go on for a while because most of the time folks are just listening to us anyway. They're not require it maybe something they might want to revisit and you know maybe change the rules a little bit as you know do some more research on yeah. that yeah and i think i think it changes over time because three to five is working right now give it a year and it, and it won't um and so that's why it's always right. good to have your ear to the ground and always doing that survey um mm -hmm. what was the what was the watch through rate how many people stayed on facebook and and watched this video to the end um mm -hmm. and, and then you can kind of dan do that little dance with your audience and you'll and you'll learn the steps together yeah. we have a good question about considering this considering the current circumstances what do we do about visuals if we don't actually have the book in hand because the that's books a great are library question. i'm at home i still want to do a talk about it that's a really great question. So um, if you um, have a printer at home, that can be useful for, for book covers. Um, what I'm also doing is just taking screenshots of book covers um, and then putting them on my phone and holding them up now so that you can see, because most of what we're promoting is digital content. Another great way to um, show books um, is to create a tablet. We, we do, um, that, that just reminds me, you're talking about holding up the phone. We do that book face Friday here at the Library Commission, and sometimes we don't have the actual book, and they've gotten a tablet and put this made, put just the book cover on there because it's bigger, and they can kind of fake it that here's a book face Friday, but it's a tablet. <laughs> Another great way is like if you have a Windows platform, I'm certain Macs have them too, you can use like the, the game bar, which is usually used to, for streamers who are playing video games and then twitching that out or streaming that out to audiences. But you could create your book list in the catalog and then just walk through it and, and record on the mic on your laptop and just produce that video as well. Yeah, and get creative with it. Yeah. yeah. So and and, and so then you have your part. descriptions right there and it's just a nice curated list you've made. Right, and you're showing off your catalog, your library's website, whatever. <clears throat> Someone wants to know, you said you use your phone to record sometimes, or? I do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a busted up iPhone 8, and I was just using what I have because um, I went to school for librarianship. I didn't go to school for marketing, and I wanted to be able to produce something that would be easy for my staff to replicate. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that if I did ask them to do this when I was on vacation, um, this was something that they could comfortably do in their cubicle or in a meeting room and um, and not need any specialized tools to take it on the road. Yeah, many uh, uh, cell phones now, a lot of them, even not the newest ones, do have really good video capabilities. You'd be surprised, yeah. Now, I have kind of gotten class with it. I did buy a $5 tripod to put it on oh, instead of leaning against books, that, but um, I haven't gone <laughs> Hollywood. Please don't. Don't think I've sold out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just like what we're doing here, too. These, I've got a little webcam sitting on top of my monitor. It's just a, it's a USB webcam that I bought, I don't even know, 10, 15 years ago, and it works. doesn't need to be anything crazy, yeah. Yes, yes the tripod then, is a great idea, definitely. And then what's wonderful is that you can go look, again, at that human capital out in your, in your community. Um, when you're doing a social media survey, you'll probably find that there are some excellent organic content creators and marketers, and there might be an opportunity for collaboration there. In fact, that's kind of what we did next. Cool. Do we have any other great questions right now? Uh, no, I want to go ahead. Um, so I did have a question from the, the beginning that I hadn't caught yet. Um, I had to get through all of the people talking about Billy Eilish. Um, someone wanted to, if you can explain, I don't know what Wolfram Alpha is. Oh, okay. So it's a database that can give you a lot of the same metrics that. Um, that the census fact finder would. Um, it's just a database. If you Google Wolfram Alpha, you should be able to find it. What I really like about it is that you can plug in mathematical formulas and it can help you walk through um, the steps to arrive at the uh, at the answer. Um, so I, I use it sometimes at the reference desk and it will give me uh, uh, census breakdowns of communities if I, if I look them up and median ages and it's a really nice resource. Yeah, so it's Wolfram Alpha, W-O-L-F-R-A-M, a L P H A Wolfram Alpha yeah. Al Alpha. It sounds like a, a oh I'll oh, go a law firm from something like Buffy, but <laughs> now I even like it more. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what I always think of when I think it. Sounds kind of a little evil, but it's not. It's great. <laughs> Wolfram Alpha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Yes, exactly. Well, thank you for uh, great questions. Yeah, and actually we did become, someone does have a way that they use their phone to do this actually, which is a great suggestion. I use my phone since I can just upload it to my Google Photos cloud and pull it off onto any of our computers. So if your phone, if your own phone is linked to your, you know, your, mine does too, mine automatically uploads any photos or videos to my Google and then I can, yeah, grab them from anywhere and put them, um, that's, yeah. That's so smart. Yes. And and then you can crowdsource yeah, that with your staff very well. Backup, yeah. So then if you have like book talks on the road, you can send that right on and folks yeah. can yeah. That's a great idea. Thank you. If someone has a question I don't know that we have an answer to. What resolution do you record at? Oh Make the highest the highest setting that I am allowed. Yeah. Always go with the highest setting. I know that it makes it a larger file, but I, that that's what I do just so that folks can see my face and and uh, and and see my expression and and the, all the text on the books. I wish I had a smarter answer. I could find out for you. Yeah, you want to make sure, depending on where what it's at the other end, that they're going to get as the best version of the video that they can see. So if you whatever is the highest, that should you know, help everybody see it better. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, always when I'm on Facebook, I live. I always choose the HD option especially because a lot of kiddos are streaming our story times on their TVs at home now, so. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, okay, we have another question here that may be something you'll talk about, I don't know. Uh, what about closed captioning? Is that so that's a great option. And, and actually, I think it's gonna be considered required here in a couple of years. YouTube's really working well to, um, to be able to hear it and, and automatically put in information and then you can tweak it. In fact, when we did our summer reading video, that's how we did our closed captioning. So um, I would totally recommend doing that. As you can tell, I don't enunciate as well as I should and I talk fast when I get nervous or excited. And so it would probably be a great bet for folks to be broadening that accessibility. Mm -hmm. And YouTube does, what yeah. For our recordings here for um, Encompass Live, as I mentioned in the beginning, we do post ours up to our YouTube channel, and they do have now, they didn't have it originally, we started the show like 10 years ago, but they have an automatic uh, closed captioning that will, after a day or so, it appears as, a, as an option that you can click and turn on. Um, yes. Just like you said, they, sometimes they catch things that you say correctly and sometimes don't. It leans more to me, I mean, watching ours, more correctly than not. Um, the name of our show, Encompass Live, that's a little confusing to it, of course, <laughs> um, and sometimes people's names and things, but it is editable afterwards as well. So I can go in there and yeah. read through it, and if anything did need to be tweaked to, to the, you know, to be changed, you can go in and edit afterwards. So um, that is definitely something that YouTube is doing automatically now, if you want. Um, I know there are companies that will do that for you if you have the funding to reach out to them. I don't know them myself because we're just using YouTube, but I know other um, places have done that. And then basic platforms that come with your with your hardware now. Um, so I'm, I'm on a Windows 10 and right now I'm experimenting with video editor because I'm making a video for Friday and it has that function too. I think you're going to continually see an increase as that demand and expectation rises, which is good. Yeah. It's becoming more common, not out of the ordinary. Yeah. It's just like going to be a standard, like, oh, of course it is. Yeah. And then you want to think about what's that punchy phrase or something that's going to grab them because if you're scrolling through and you're not automatically hearing the videos, but you can read the captions, you'll be, you want to have some sort of hook so that people pause and they hang out with you for a minute. So that's some good thoughts right there. Right. Awesome. Great. So thank you so much, y'all, giving me ideas and making me think, and it's always <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Um, so these are the things we learned because always um, you always have opportunities for growth. Um, and so what we did was we thought, you know what, we aren't content creators. I wonder if there's somebody in the community that not only could assist us, but be benefited by being assisted. And so we went out to our Southeastern Community College. Um, I happen to know a few folks there being on their staff and they do have a cohort of marketing students. Um, every single semester, they have to create videos for community groups and organizations and businesses to add to their plat uh, portfolios before they're able to graduate. And so we reached out to them and we just sort of had a conversation about 
we're in the collaborative summer library program and let us tell you a little bit about that and it's space themed this year and here's what we do to support the summer slide and make sure that that doesn't happen in, in, in the months that we're off uh, school and could you help us maybe create some sort of promotional video to take to the schools each spring to talk to them and get them all excited about summer reading and the students who were looking for projects were super excited to help us um, but before we get into that, I want to do a sing-along on the honor system because I can't hear you or see you right now. Um, the the uh, video was a Bohemian Rhapsody parody um, that my excellent uh, services librarian or storytime librarian wrote um, because of the popularity of Bohemian Rhapsody. And so she wrote lyrics for the entire song, and that was what was recorded. So are you all ready? Do you want to just take a sip? And I have that <laughs> All right. Inside of dark fantasy, open a book, turn to the page, and read. I promise not to sing anymore. I'm just a book. I need a book to read. Easy book, easy book. Give me a book to read. We recovered her, don't worry. <laughs> that was great effect. <laughs> So that was our video. If you've made it to the end, you were amazing. <laughs> Credits, of course. Summer, that was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you all for singing with me or not flying from your rooms and computers um, when I sing. No, um, we actually have um, some good comments, of course. Love it, cute, 
video oh. for some reason. Um, someone wants to know if they can get um, the words. Oh, definitely. Uh, they're they right on the YouTube, and I will I'll get those to you um, as well. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. awesome. Um, but of course, they want to know: Have you made one for this year's theme yet? <laughs> We have, it features a Komodo dragon and they dream up summer reading and then they talk about all of the wonderful events in the dream. And um, we're now reworking it with more digital components because of what's happened. But mm -hmm. the digital dragon with like the little tied on dragon wings, he's, he's adorable. <laughs> I'm in love. Yeah. We'll have to look for that one, yes. <laughs> so it says, yeah, it just got better as it went on. Yeah, so they look ah, Thank you. <laughs> And this does actually lead to um, a question. Yeah, somebody posted earlier, which I think um, fits in well. They wanted to know YouTube versus Facebook. So, um, great question. I host on YouTube and then I post on Facebook, so I can kind of keep a little repository. Our our YouTube channel is just kind of the place where Sam stores stuff. I haven't really been doing a lot of channel uh, branding or marketing there at this time because it just isn't fit for my community at this time. But, but YouTube is absolutely a wonderful platform. Like I said, I, that's I, what we use for our archives. That's what we use for our archives for our show and other things we do at the Library Commission, just because it's been something we've used for years. Um, actually, before there was Facebook video, so we just kind of kept doing that. But we do still also, like you said earlier, you need to go where your people are your community is going to be. So if you know your people are using YouTube, that's where you want to be posting. If you know they're mostly on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, um, you, you know, you go wherever they are. Yes. Um, and somebody just make a comment. YouTube has the advantage of not needing an account to view the videos. This is true. Yes. That's a fair point. Great point. That's yes. exactly. Thank you. That's a fair point. Um, and what was great about this collaboration was that we had a whole bunch of 19, 20 somethings that were not using the library. And because you can see they filmed on location and uh, we brought in an inflatable dinosaur and we played each other's guitar chords, they realized we're okay. It's this is a place for you, this is a place for fun. And they all got library cards. And because they made this content, they were our organic boosters, they were our internal marketers of this video. And um, they had the green screen, of course, so that Allison could float in space, hey, hey. And they had the unflattering lights so that we could run with the spook. Um, and, and you had uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, astronaut helmet and an outfit, apparently, somebody had. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, when they need something, they just run to my office because, again, I'm a cosplayer. And so um, yeah, yeah, I would like to tell you that that wasn't just in my office lying around, but I don't want to lie to you, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so it was a lot of fun for us, and we, we saw a lot of engagement. It was a way to showcase our collection, but briefly and in a lot of fun for folks who had never been there. Um, our youth desk is where we're sitting, rocking out. Um, we have one of the first tween centers in the state for public libraries right behind us. So we have a collection and a space dedicated to our tweens um, that we were kind of showcasing there a little bit as well. As you can see, the big tween sign hanging above my head is um, I'm trying to rock out two guitars at the same time. <clears throat> and um, we gave our credit because you need to make sure that you, you, you know, get those members of the team that are you know, brave enough to, to do something fun and silly and engage with them and bond over them because we all have different departments. So I don't get to play with catalogers a lot and maybe they're relieved by that, but it was fun to play with them and, and to, to learn with them. Um, we had in the first week 3,500 uh, uh, views, uh, 29 shares, uh, 113 comments, 89 responses. But most importantly, we have one excellent and ongoing collaboration with these students and marketers at SCC. So we've given them an annual project they can count on. And we've given uh, an opportunity to promote the library to a group of folks who may not have a reason to come if they don't have, you know, children to bring to story time and they can download their media. Uh, this is an opportunity to say, hey, but we have cake pans and drills and Blu-rays and video games and we're here for you. So it was a really uh, great. Yeah, and someone does comment. I like that it was intergenerational. The song is a classic, yet the goofiness appeals to a younger crowd. <laughs> Precisely. And it and it piggybacks on the cultural phenomena that was Bohemian Rhapsody at yes. the time. 
Mm -hmm. um, the person who was reading fast and slow at the front was actually one of our board members. So we made sure to kind of get stakeholders so that they mm -hmm. understood, well, this is what you were supporting us in doing, and this is the outcome from that. And we would like you to be a face of that. And it was wonderful that they, they were willing. Um, again, though, it's an opportunity to learn. Uh, a lot of things to think about coming out of it and part of it was to promote the process to have teasers so when we were going to the recording studio and we were donning the astronaut helmet and things of that nature making sure that we were talking about there's this video coming and you're going to want to see it and sort of build up some momentum a, a teaser for the teaser a commercial for the trailer yeah um plan plan um and then enjoy the process so for me it had kind of been I'm with my iPhone, I'm doing these videos. Um, I don't know what this big production, because comparatively, that's a huge production for us. So just planning and communicating well, but enjoying the process and trusting the team, trusting the folks who are in school for this and your youth services librarians to do what they do best, engage people. Mm -hmm. And then think about the next moment. The moment they agreed and like we you know, shook theoretical hands on doing this video, I was thinking, okay, well, what can they do for Imagine Your Story next year? Because I want to be planting that seed now. Um, and, and, you know, taking a, wonderful uh photos of my staff and making sure i have them for you know later just in case <laughs> you never know what you might need them for <laughs> you never know it was a wonderful buying experience and if you think about it the process is sort of easy you listen to your community and you respond and then they they say something back and you repeat so our community wanted videos and we responded our community wanted book suggestions that's what we responded back with our community wanted to be engaged we went out and found avenues of engagement and that's just kind of how we've we've been pushing it ever since. Um, sometimes we have folks seek us out to make specific videos. In this instance, our friends at the library really spoil us. We are so abundantly blessed. They have a storefront in our lobby and they have staffed it for 15 years since the building opened, 100% volunteer. Um, those proceeds fund 100% of our programming budget. So food, entertainers, supplies um, are not a line item budget. And uh, for us, we go to our friends and they have uh, four massive book sales every single year. And it takes like a parade of folks in carts and boxes and boxes of books past my office zipping by to put out the books and put them in, in, in beautiful order and array. Uh, four times a year. And so I've always wanted to capture that process because it's amazing, but I didn't know how. And one of our friends in the library said, well, could you do like a, you know, one of those fast forward videos? And I'm like, fast forward. Oh, oh, like stop motion. Like, like, like you really speed up the, 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 the video. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, uh, yes, but I didn't tell them I had no idea how to do that. So I um, broke open a GoPro that we got from a STEM grant and I'm like, um, okay, let's read the instructions and figure this out. And so we filmed them setting up their sale, which is our third and final video. Yeah, all right. Okay, waiting for it to come up. Volunteers, aren't they amazing? Just beautiful people in these communities all over the all over the world, supporting libraries. I so one of my song. favorite things about this is they feel like <laughs> so if you think about it, there's somebody's grandma and sister and neighbor in this video, which makes it very shareable. Because if you see your face or someone you know, you tag them and you share it. Mm -hmm. We sold about $1,200 more this sale than we had ever previously done before. And that's on 50 cent paperbacks and dollar hardbacks. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of books going out the door. So it works. And all it, yep, so all it took, thank you so much for showing those videos. Um, I really appreciate you is that um you know you just you lean into yes you err on the side of access and 
you you just lean into learning. Um, so what was great about that video is that it literally involved the community. It was something they specifically asked for from us, especially stakeholders who are funding our programs and really just put themselves out there day after day for us, for, for the mission of our library <laughs> and being able to say yes to them and then just leaning into learning. So um, we realized that it doesn't have to be complicated. So we'd gone from a system of you're sitting in your office recording these videos, you're taking the best out of three to a grander production with folks at our community college to you can figure out a GoPro and you can make your friends and library sound like little shit books and it's hilarious, <laughs> but you can also make this simple. It could be stop motion. So during the debate, we didn't want to uh, get too involved with political posting, but we knew that there were a lot of topics that were important with the first democratic debate several months back. And so we just do things like uh, debate topics and we write down on a, a piece of paper, the, the topic and the call number, and then we would just slide it underneath the camera and put some you know, copyright free music to it. And it just lets folks know that we're not telling you what you should be reading, but we know that these are issues that the nation's interested in. And so here they are. And if Very you think about it, sometimes, yeah, it's as it's as easy and as quick to do that as it is to make a bookmark that people may or may not grab and can or cannot share and probably won't on social media where there's a broader audience. So something to think about there. Um, we do have a couple of questions actually about the, the previous video that just came in that you know just oh. after the, the one from the um, book sale. Um, sure. And actually says actually recommendation. There are, are also apps you can get to speed up your videos. Um, hyperlapse um, is one that they mentioned, and there's others. So if you don't have something that does that automatically, you can look for something that you can then use on a video you have already taken and make it do that, I guess. Yes, and again, um, I don't mean to keep pushing this, but uh, video editor in Windows, it does it too. I made myself sound like a chipmunk uh, earlier this morning um, and <laughs> had to slow it down just a little bit. It yeah. was great. Yeah. Um, and then we have a question on which, and I, I I think I might know, but I'll ask you an answer. Do you, for the all the people that were in that video for the, the book sale, do you need photo releases from all of these people? So I do, I get verbal consent and that they know exactly where this is gonna go. And then I have them sign that. Um, it, for me, it was because um, um, you can, a lot of people have probably gone to programs or been to concerts and they've signed it and they understand what that's about. But there are probably a lot of folks who are like, I'm your friend and I'm doing this and I know you're promoting what we're doing, which is great, but I wanted to know this has the potential of going anywhere once it's online. So are you right. comfortable with that? And if you're not, we're at peace with that. And so there were folks who were like, not my not my scene. And so they were like our Apple box cart pushers and they'd get it to the door and, and they were totally fine with that because then they didn't have to organize all of those topics. It was great. <laughs> so like, I was like, mm -hmm. work for them, yeah, depending on what they like to do, yeah. So definitely, and that's a kind of a situation too, as opposed to being just like um, a video taken out in the public, general public. This was a specific event happening just with those particular staff people or volunteers people doing this particular thing. It wasn't like, here's a picture of, you know, all the random people from the community coming into the book sale that you would then have to explain to them. This was like, here's the group of volunteers. I'm going to talk to you and tell you what's happening. Let us know if you're good with that or not before we even and start the process. Yeah, exactly. And there weren't minors, so I wasn't asking someone to make that decision. You know, like a grandparent to make that decision. Um, I, I, I was really lucky because um, I primarily film adults, which sounds creepier out loud now that I've said it. But yeah, <laughs> it's all. Um, so yes, definitely something you do need to take into consideration if you're going to be doing any of these videos with people in it um just like taking pictures of the people in the library and posting them out out to the public same situation yep backs of heads are really good you still get that human quality and you're actually getting it from the perspective so like when i do story times i actually sit on the floor and i'm behind like in the back row because then it feels like i'm actually a kid or a participant yeah. on the floor wow. seeing the vantage point i'm putting you where you would be if you were here with me mm -hmm. so yeah awesome well, thank you. So again, it can be super simplistic. I've written down hyperlapse. I'm totally using that. And it can be messy. Um, my favorite poem is um, The Waking. And my favorite stanza is, I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I feel my fate and what I cannot fear. I learn by going where I have to go. And I feel like that could be a motto for what a lot of us are doing, not only as librarian staff, but also um, 
just in the world today as it is, you are all going to learn by going where you have to go. And I think the character and mm -hmm. reputation and marketing that you build is probably in all the things you allow yourself to do once you get past that initial tummy butterfly fear. And so um, you're not alone, even if you are a social marketer of one, I, I put my information out there on purpose. Um, you're always welcome to reach out. I'd love to bounce off ideas anytime. Or, or even do like a call with staff if I can be of any use. And um, I just deeply appreciate the time that you've all given today um, with me. It, it means a lot to me. And so thank you. Absolutely. Um, of course. All right. And there is Sam's contact information. Reach out to her, definitely. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this was an awesome session, of course. Um, we had a lot of uh, um, interest in this from uh, out all across the country as you saw from our opening map there so um hopefully it's got a lot of good information people um <clears throat> anybody there are a few questions that came in i'm going to ask anybody just have any other questions comments suggestions you want to share type in your go to webinar question section and we can um get those answered here no problem we'll go as long as it takes to get through any comments or questions anybody has here um, i have a quick plug on friday we're going to be doing our first good news spoof if you haven't seen john krasinski from the office yeah, uh, some yes. good news that's a great YouTube. we're doing a library spoof so um oh, cool. find us on friday on, on your uh, burlington public library facebook page yes all right absolutely yes, i will be looking for that definitely <laughs> all right so um let's go to the questions we have here um just going back to the we were, we were just talking about came in just after we finished talking about the getting um, the signing of the releases so wants to know do you need sign off consent from staff members or is verbal consent sufficient i think anything you can have in writing is good um That's what I was say, uh, yeah. we um well. we we've we you can play it fast and, and loose um i know the different cultures some folks may not even have one of those on fly on, on in place but you can find these online and tweak them and it's really helpful and and at least in the public library setting you've also got like you know your your uh a county attorney that can totally just help you spruce one up that's true yeah talk to your whoever is your library or your city yeah um and then we just got i'm just gonna look we got a lot of comments here uh let's see that was awesome thank you uh i learned a lot you gave me some really good ideas great um this is you know this is what it was all about with our show i think is um r d as my um director likes to say rip off and duplicate highly encouraged <laughs> writing that down too <laughs> it's true he says that <laughs> I think I just broke my head <laughs> over there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, very helpful. Nice tips and tricks with easy approaches for us to take our first steps in the process. Yes, you're awesome. I learned so much. Um, took lots of notes. Yeah, I think we had a lot of great ideas in here. And this is like a thing that I mean, people were already doing this kind of video connect in connecting, but especially in these current times. Yes. Um, Someone has a good question. How can I get my staff enthusiastic about doing any of this? Like, what if you have the naysayer or the reluctant staff person? So I think it's knowing their currency um, and knowing what matters to them. So I have a staff member who um, is almost predominantly on a desk and would like a breather. And so I'm like, you know what? Um, I really just need your help crafting this and writing it. I know that you have these really excellent skills and um, I know that you um, you follow a lot of influencers on YouTube. Can you look at this script before our students come? And once they have, you know, a couple of off desk hours to look at something or you've involved them and you want them to, you want their approval and, and, and their stamp on it. It's funny how all of a sudden it's like, oh, I could be, I could be in front of a camera. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is being willing to do what you're being at what you're asking others to do is very important for me. That's why I want to make sure it was replicated. And then, I, um, I'm embarrassing you know, maybe the, doing it, you can too. <laughs> well, and the other thing is maybe book talks are not for them, but maybe a behind the scenes. You know, can can you just sure. tell me about your job? Like right now, we could get on go to, we could get on Zoom, and we could just have a regular conversation that would otherwise be a meeting, but with a few guided questions. I could just learn about. How do you catalog? What goes into that? What happens to the life of a book before it can get into a patron's hands? And you've got yourself mm -hmm. a really nice marketing video all of a sudden. Yeah. So you just kind of think of their currency and um, you start small. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> and if you need more ideas, you know, reach out. Um, let's see, we've got a lot of other comments coming in. What a great webinar. Thank you for, oh, someone says, Krista, I like your cat. Thank you, That's that was Logan, one of them. <laughs> He's gonna be even more famous now. <laughs> um, it seems so doable now, thanks to your presentation, to be able to do this themselves. Uh, Someone missed the first part um, and wants to know, um, I've done videos on my phone to Facebook, but how do you do YouTube and do you have to pay for this? Uh, no, YouTube is free too. Um, you just need to set up an account. As I, I said, we use it here at the Nebraska Library Commission. There's no cost for it at all. Um, it's free. You just um, create yourself a YouTube or a through your Google account now because it's part of Google. So if you have a Google account yourself, you can feel like you've got YouTube in there, or you can create one for your library. We have one that's it's not my personal YouTube or my Google account. It's the Nebraska Library Commission that's out there, and um, you just upload it to there. Uh, and yeah, there's no, there's no yeah there's no cost or anything. It's pretty slick. Yeah. Um, Someone's in completely inspired, great motto, starting small is a great idea, yeah. Um, I could let perfect get in my way a lot, and I, 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 I can't, because I'm not skilled enough to allow that to happen. <laughs> it is hard, yeah, you do have to, you know, it's, it's okay. This, um, I've been doing this Encompass Live show for over 10 years now, and in the beginning it was very nerve-wracking, and, and there are times when things don't go well. Um, when last week's show, actually, we had some sound issues, some audio issues, and some broad bandwidth issues, and we just barreled through it. And it got recorded, it, it happened, but um, it, it's okay. Not There's gonna be failures, there's gonna be bumps in the road, um, you're gonna have to redo a video or picture. You know, if you posted pictures or videos of personal things online, you don't just take one and post it nowadays. You, you take 15 pictures yeah. of your cat and pick exactly. the one where you can focus and looks the cutest or the silliest or whatever you want to put out there. Um, same thing for your, your library um, promotion and marketing. You're going to do the same thing. Yeah. And here's a word of hope. Right now, everybody's retooling. Right now, everybody's jumping online. And so you're, you're not going to look much farther ahead or behind maybe than all of the curve for several months. So be easy on yourself. We're all making room right now because right. we know that it's not normal. <laughs> cool, I've never done it. And that actually answers a question that somebody did post a little earlier. Any thoughts on going forward during these times? Um, I think I'm sorry. That, any thoughts on going forward during these times? Oh, yes, definitely. So I think it's going into like, you know, everybody has, every community has like their Facebook where we all talk to each other. So like ours is like Burlington, Iowa neighborhoods and stuff like that. It's time to maybe just go into those little spaces and see what people care about and what they want to know. Right now, our library is doing a survey on how can we help you. And one of the most top responses was we want more we want more book talks. We want more books recommendations. So I think going forward, it would just once again, doing some form of a survey, even if it's just taking a walk in those spaces and making observations yourself and then just saying, you know what, I'm going to answer some mm -hmm. of those questions. I'm going to fill in some of those needs. And then, yeah, you're good. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's, yeah, everybody's learning. Like I said, this is all new to everybody, to both you at the library and your community. So look and see here in Nebraska, our mayor is very social. She's got lots of places where you can reach out to her on Twitter and on Facebook and everything and is posting things. So look for that kind of um, places as well and start working with your city and whoever is in charge there. Um, I think we'll do one last comment. We are a little after 11 o'clock, uh, our official time, but that's okay. We go as long as it takes. We just have one last comment. I think you've mentioned this earlier is probably the answer, but we'll see. What video editor do you recommend? Well, right now I'm just using the basic video editor that I have in Windows 10 because um, I feel like if that's what's, it's, it came with the hardware, I'll learn my skills there. And then if I need to level up, then I'll make a purchase. Part of the reason is that I'm going to use this because every staff member has this laptop that's been sent home. And so whatever I'm doing, I can share with them and they can play too. So I guess when you think about your video editor, free is a great place to start to just to learn those tools. And then think about what other people may have to manipulate the content on and try to make it as accessible as possible for them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I do the same thing as well. I actually use um, what's built into Windows when I have to edit um, my, uh, if I have to do editing my Encompass Live videos. Well, um, I also do, and, I've, and working on them right now, um, I do an annual online conference, an all day long conference, big talk from small libraries. 
oh. the same software and it comes out with an eight hour long video which i then chop up into the 12 individual presentations you can watch each one of those separately um and i just use the windows um built-in editing to just trim off the beginning drop the end boom i have a, i have a video and i keep doing that through all of them um so it works great i also have used within youtube now they have an editor as well so if you're uploading to youtube when i've had to do things like take out something in the middle of a session of a recording i use that and it has where you can split it and then you know take out the part that's bad and it's not the tech smoosh it back together whatever stitch it back together <laughs> i'm not a professional either i've just figured out what i can use for this and so that works well for those kind of things like last week when we had some technical difficulties in the middle i had to kind of chop out a couple of minutes of dead air and i used youtube to do that yeah okay and then if you're recording your screen i just use the game bar it's it's uh xbox is on i and i get to and it's, it's a chrome extension too so you can get the game bar and you can Go onto your website, tell people what you're clicking to get to your databases from home, and now you've given them instructions and you can you have a video, you're done. And it's built right in. So it's great. Yeah, there's a lot of resources. And we have one tip that I'll give here. I think it's the last thing that I'll mention. Um, someone just suggests something called DaVinci Resolve 15. I have not heard of okay. that one. Um okay. just free and very similar to Adobe Premiere, which is good. I actually did try to use Adobe Premiere before at my at um, the library commission. They did purchase that for me. It was really too deep for what I needed and it cost because it's Adobe. Um, but it's this is a free version and very similar to that, this um, she says. So DaVinci Resolve 15 is what it's called. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll write that down. Yeah. And someone is very impressed with our webinar. Thank you so much, Mary. Glad to hear that. They're going to be recommending this recording to the rest of my library district staff. We're going to have a lot of hits on a recording. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, thank you so much, um, Sam. This was great. I, I learned a lot from this. And I kind of, you know, we do a lot of these things, some of these things, the library commission, you know, we're the state library. Um, and sometimes I wish when I do these things that I worked in it. A library too so i can do some of these fun things more fun things as well but um i am happy to share this and have all you guys on um, these resources so thank you so much sam thank you everyone for attending i am going to pull presenter control back to my screen again to wrap up and actually i'm going to show you here something somebody asked about earlier wolfram alpha this is what we're talking about here so i just googled wolfram thank alpha you. And actually, if you just start typing in Wolfram, it apparently knows it, and it came up with it automatically. So that is what um, Sam was talking about using um, previously. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, we'll be on our page in the archives, and I'll show you here on a Library Commission website. We have a search. You can search for Encompass Live. But if you use your search engine of choice, you will find us. So far, there's nothing else in the world called Encompass Live. Nobody else is allowed to use it. <laughs> and you will find our main page. Our upcoming shows are listed here, but this is where our archives are at the bottom underneath them. The most recent ones at the top of the page. So today's show um, should be by the end of the week, as long as everything, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperates with me, should be up here. Everyone who attended this morning and registered for today's show, you'll get an email from me letting you know. And it'll be posted up here, just like last week's show, a link to the recording, a link to the presentation slides, um, the uh, well, that sheet that you're going to send me, Sam, that I'll that I'll upload the survey. The Yes, the survey, yep, we can get that up there too. Um, we'll have links for everything for you there. So um, keep an eye on that and we'll have the recording up for you there. I'll just mention here, I've been talking about how we've been doing the show for a little over 10 years. This is our full archives here. So we do a search feature so you can search through this entire list and find for any topic or person or library you might be interested in that might've been on the show. You can limit it to the most recent 12 months though if you just want very current recent information. Um, because if you do do the full archives, like I said, 10 years, we have been doing the show. We, we, brought, we premiered in January 2009, and all of our archives are here. So if you scroll back, I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom, you will find things from previous dates. So when you are watching our recordings, our archives, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. Some things may be old, some information may be old or outdated, some services and products might not exist anymore, some links might be broken whatever um many of our sessions are eternal and will always be useful you know books to read and you know topics and stuff but some things may um become outdated just pay attention to when something was originally broadcast whenever you are watching any of our archives 
We also do have a Facebook page. Well, I was going to leave this open here, where um, we post uh, any uh, reminders about sessions that are coming up. As a reminder to log in today's show. Whenever our recordings are available, we post on here. So if you do like to use Facebook, keep up with us. Give us a like, and you'll get a reminder a couple of times a week, uh, maybe from me, about sessions um, that are coming up um, on there. Other than that, I hope you join us for next week's show, which is something very um, uh, to, to, to the curtain to, current times, I guess. Escaping online, virtual escape rooms, and other online programs. Did anybody see that article in American Libraries Magazine about um, digital escape rooms and what libraries are doing? I'll open that up here so I think I have a link to that. Um, there we go. Uh, I am going to have on the show next week, um, Sydney from uh, Peter's Crown Township Library in Pennsylvania, who did this Hogwarts escape room, the oh. Hogwarts digital escape room. She's gonna be on the show with me next week to talk about that and other things that you can do virtually now that this is where we are, we are putting out all of our programming. So please do sign up for the show. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, I think. I'm, I wanna do it. I started with doing this escape room and then I decided I'm gonna wait and see how she did it and then try it later. <laughs> um, and you can see our other shows we have coming up here. I am working on getting things for May and June and future months. So keep an eye on our schedule for um, any of our upcoming shows when they get added to here, uh, to our calendar. So thank you everybody for attending. Thank you, Sam, for being here this, this morning with me. Thank you, it was wonderful. This was fun and um, we will see you another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Hi.